Thank you, Doug. IBM and Twitter have entered into a landmark partnership to help inform every business decision. It's a bold statement, but if you're like me, you might think it's a little content free. So I want to talk to you about what that really means. What we're doing in this system is, you know, we've got a cloud service that we operate and manage. It's permanently connected to the GNIP Deca hose. It augments that feed, enhances that feed using IBM Analytics software, the basic stuff, you know, the identification of the gender of the author of a tweet or a location for a tweet that's not uh, geocoded, sentiment analysis, and a whole host of other, you know, analytics offerings that we're continuously rolling out into that system. All right. We also take the set of compliance events that Twitter publishes so that at the end of the day, we have a cleansed, curated, augmented feed of social media information. We then make that data set available. We republish it for IBM software as a service properties like Watson Analytics, for IBM clients to incorporate into their business processes. And we make this feed available for developers in the IBM cloud ecosystem, whether it's in our platform as a service Bluemix, our Big Insights Hadoop distribution in the cloud. Uh, we make this information available in a fully indexed, searchable fashion. So this is the sort of thing that, you know, ultimately is able to drive an awful lot of, optim of optimization. We've seen large financial institutions build comprehensive author profiles uh, across their entire corpus of their end users and leverage that information to help drive their marketing strategies and their, their optimization of their business processes. Speaking of big insights, uh, I want to say a few words about some changes that we're making in the way that we bring this offering to the market and the way that we, we help you make sense of your data. Uh, Amr alluded earlier to something called the Open Data Platform. IBM is a founding member of that initiative, along with a number of other vendors. Uh, and it's not about displacing or usurping uh, the uh, ASF's position in, in this whole big data ecosystem. Uh, as Doug said, I'm a, a longtime committer of Apache, and IBM has been uh, a supporter of the ASF for as long as it's existed. When my company was acquired, the rate and pace of our contributions to the ASF uh, increased dramatically. It didn't diminish, right? The open data platform is really more about kind of trying to tamp down on some of the skew of these big data distributions in the market and help you as clients be able to, you know, extract value from a big data platform regardless of the blend of vendors that you choose. So I think it's a good thing in the market. I think it'll help, you know, make some of your decisions about your big data strategy ultimately be easier. In addition to the open data platform, we now have a set of modules that are geared towards specific sort of user personas, right? We have the systems administrator, where IBM is able to provide rich multi-tenancy capabilities and workload scheduling uh, that derives from some of our longtime heritage in technical computing. We have modules for business analysts, a sophisticated SQL interface. It's incredibly you know, efficient and powerful and complete. Uh, in terms of, you know, the SQL that you're used to using in your BI tools, this thing is very, very well supported. Uh, as well as a spreadsheet-style interface that allows you to do, you know, explorations of uh, a cluster of Hadoop data in the same way that you would normally uh, work with a spreadsheet on your laptop. And finally, a module for data scientists, bringing to bear some of IBM's rich history in machine learning algorithms and text analytics, uh, as well as a commitment to enabling R as, you know, a powerful computation framework in Hadoop analytics, right? Uh, I know when I was a graduate student, uh, the, the members of my research group who had really bet on R for their particle physics studies, by the time they had gotten through the data preparation phase and the cleansing phase, and they had gotten the data into the format that R wanted it to be in, they were fast, right? Uh, and what I'm excited about with this in Hadoop analytics is the fact that we can try to minimize a lot of those data preparation phases and give you a very natural way to interact with your data in Hadoop using R. Our commitment to R extends beyond just to dupe. We also have in database analytics in our DashDB cloud data warehouse. Our tables in DashDB are exposed as data frames in R. Uh, and then, you know, the filters and selections that you're doing in your R data frames can be pushed down into that memory optimized columnar database. This thing is state of the art, delivered as a fully managed cloud service. DashDB is just one example of IBM's renewed commitment to providing developers with a full, robust set of cloud data services covering content, data, and analytics. Uh, I'd love to tell you more about our vision there, our commitment, uh, our roadmap, and the services that we have available today. So please do stop by the booth. Uh, 
We've got you know reading materials, um, you know demos of both our big data platform as well as the full spectrum of cloud data services and how they work together to help you uh, make sense of your data. At the end of the day, it's not about the data; it's about what you do with it that really matters. Uh, so thank you for your time uh, and enjoy the conference.